Welcome to Salisbury University On The Air, a program highlighting the activities and the people of the campus. My name is Susan Purnell. From the Executive Mansion in Philadelphia to Boston's Back Bay to Louisiana's Creole Country and beyond, Salisbury University's 2016 African American History Month celebration in February showcases hallowed grounds, sites of African American memory, this year's nationwide theme. Salisbury University joins in the celebration with its annual series of events from historical discussions to performances. Here to tell us about them is Dr. April Logan, Assistant Professor of English and Chair of SU's African American History Month Committee. So welcome, April. Hello, Susan. How are you doing? Good thank to see you again. Thank you for having me here I today. I think you've had two babies since we last talked. Yep, twins. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a lot of work. <laughs> yes, it's a lot of excitement. Double but I tell, trouble, right? Right, right. Well, I tell everyone it's endlessly entertaining, so they're, they're a lot of fun. We're oh, really I bet that. So how old are they now? They're um, 19 months. Oh, God. Walking and... Yes, walking, talking, oh, that, doing everything, getting fantastic. into everything. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Well, before we begin discussing all of the events planned for this month, can you give us some background on African American uh, History Month? When was fa it founded, for example? For example, um, it originated with Carter G. Woodson, who is known as uh, the father of uh, uh, black history. Um, and it began as a week, um, but then over time in 1926. But over time, you know, due to the agitation and commitment of um, communities, activists, and political leaders, it eventually evolved into a month. And in 1986, um, the Congress passed a public law establishing Fe February of African American um, History Month. And the reason um, Carter G. Woodson originally picked February was in recognition of two leaders who significantly influenced African American History Month, um, Frederick Douglass and Abraham Lincoln. Mm -hmm. And I think the reason it began is because at that time, you know, 1926, um, in a public way, not many people knew a lot about um, African American history. And so uh, people thought that it was important to establish a week or a month to sort of dedicate our you know, interest to it, you know, to encourage the development of programs and events. Mm -hmm. And even though it's involved into a month now, um, of course, today we try to do that more throughout the whole year. But I think the historical si significance of the month is important to recognize. Um, and, you know, and that's why we also have other er, months, what some people call heritage months, such mm -hmm. as Women's History Month, Native American History Month. It's just to say that sometimes um, these histories don't get as much attention as they deserve throughout the year. So sometimes it's a useful reminder to dedicate a month um, celebration to I, it. I think that's exactly right. I mean, I, I know in 19... 56 and 66 <laughs> when I was taking history courses very little was devoted to African-American history So we're going to talk about some people today actually that I'd never heard of right. and I'm glad we're going to talk about them In fact, you're doing the keynote speech mm -hmm. this African-American History Month, right? Mm -hmm. Tell me about whom you're speaking I'll be talking about Pauline Elizabeth Hopkins. Um, she's best known for writing um, four, uh, three serialized novels and also um, the novel Contending Forces, a romance illustrative of Negro life North and South. Um, the serialized novels and Contending Forces were published from about 1900 to 1903 um, by the Colored Cooperative Publishing Company in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, all three of the serialized novels appeared in what was known as the Colored American Magazine, um, which at that time was uh, considered to be one of the, had one of the widest circulations, um, you know, uh, during that area. And also uh, some people consider to be the first, possibly the first magazine targeting um, African American culture. Mm -hmm. um, she's also known for writing the critically acclaimed play Peculiar Sam or the Underground Railroad as well. Um, in addition to, um, as I said, she, she also performed with her family. It was sort of a, a musical ensemble, a, a drama ensemble, and through that work she eventually actually um, earned the name of Boston's favorite colored soprano. So she really was this public figure. Um, she did a lot to uh, shape people's opinions and ideas. Um, and so um, that's who I'll be focused on for African um, American History Month is Pauline Hopkins. You know, I did Google her, and I okay. thought it was very interesting <laughs> that mm -hmm. although she was so prolific in her writings mm -hmm. and, and in her acting and, and, and her singing, she really made her mo money as a stenographer. So she couldn't r rely on her talent 
-hmm. as a writer mm -hmm. during her lifetime, which I guess is the case of many writers. Yes, I mean I, that that's probably that's probably uh, probably pretty cool, um, pretty typical for the day. Um, and yes. like you said, even even nowadays, even I now. mean, um, a lot of uh, I think writers are lucky if we if, if they're able to get a position as a professor or you know as a journalist or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but that's not uncommon. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but again, I mean, none. Yes, I mean it is sort of ironic that although I would say that she was very much a public intellectual um, and, and shaping uh, the nation's views in the vein of a Booker T. Washington or a mm -hmm. W.E.B. Du Bois because she was the head of that Colored American magazine, um, yeah, it is somewhat ironic that in some ways she still had to sustain herself as a, a stenographer. Right. Um, now, I know you're president of the Pauline Hopkins Society, is that what it's called? Mm -hmm. um, what would you think is her greatest impact on history? Like I said, I think her greatest impact um, was um, through the creative works, through her nonfiction, um, through her work as an editor, is really shaping the nation's views about a lot of provocative but important issues such as um, uh, African American history and culture, um, racial discrimination, economic justice, including imperialism, as, mm -hmm. as well as women's role in society. Um, she was really a leader in that. Um, even when you think of you know the novel Hagar's da Daughter, one of her serialized novels is Hagar's Daughter, Winona's Blood. So you can really see she had an investment in sort of trying to advance um, our understanding of women's role in society, um, and, you know, in particular African American mm -hmm. women, but women in but general. But women in general. Women in general. Right. So I think that would be her, um, you know, probably most important uh, contribution is really being. Um, a, you know, like I said, that sort of public intellectual is a mm -hmm. word that a lot of people are familiar mm -hmm. with today. When and where are you making this speech? Um, I'll be making the speech on um, February 18th. Let me just, uh, February 18th at 7 p.m. in the Wacomico Room. Okay. And what I'll be focusing on in the speech is really how her um, experience as a dramatist influenced her novel, um, Contending Forces. In particular, what I'm trying to look at is how she um, portrays everyday practices, such as your style of dress, even riding a bicycle, as sort of representative of African American history and politics. So, um, you know, looking at the theme for African American History Month, you know, the sort of idea of hallowed ground, sites of memory, I'm really trying to look at those everyday practices and performances as sites of memory who are that are really rich with significance. And I think she was especially aware of that because, you know, when you're a dramatist and you're doing a play or your performance, um, everything is um, the visual, the appearance is so important to that message yes. and the ideas. And I really was fascinated by how she translates that to her novel. So I really hope that a lot of people come to keynote because she's a wonderful um, person who really um, deserves much more attention and recognition. And in some ways, that's sort of what the Pauline Elizabeth Hopkins Society is dedicated to. Oh, I think it's great that they have it because it, people like me, I had never heard her name before. Mm -hmm. So when I heard that you were president, of, I, I immediately had to look it up and, and I learned a, an awful lot about her and it was fascinating. Yeah, I mean, because she's also, like I said, written a lot of short stories that are very easy for also high school teachers to work mm -hmm. into the curriculum. So I really hope that people will come out for the keynote. I understand also there's going to be a poetry reading. Is that at the same time or a different time? Um, it's at a different time. It's, uh -huh. um, uh, and basically we're having two poets, um, former Kentucky poet laureate Frank X. Walker and also an emerging poet named Shauna Morgan. Um, it's also part of African American History Month, but that will be on Tuesday, February 9th at 7 p.m. in the Wacomico Room. February 9th. Mm -hmm, okay. February 9th. Um, and just to tell you a little bit about Frank X. Walker, he's another um, fascinating individual. Again, think about this idea of, you know, where we locate our understanding of African American history and culture. He originated the term Afrolatia, which you might not have heard of, but it's actually a term. Um, and basically, he created the term to sort of help problematize the idea that a lot of people associate Appalachia with, with just whites. And he's really sort of dedicated to bringing more attention to the idea that African American culture and history is also a part of Appalachia. And, and in that vein, he also um, founded the Afrolatian Poets and also a, a fascinating journal called Pluck, the Journal of Afrolatian Arts and Culture. And he was also the recent recipient of the NAACP Image Award for mm. um, Outstanding Poetry and also a Lillian Smith Book Award. 
And one of the reasons that I think, you know, um, he and Shauna Morgan also often collaborate is because she herself is from a rural area, but a little bit different um, context. Um, she's a native of the rural district of Clarendon, Jamaica, but she very much grew up in America. So I think she brings another um, sense of, you know, sort of globalizes or broadens um, our understanding of African American um, history um, from a more sort of the, the perspective of African diaspora. Mm -hmm. And she's the author or of two chat books herself. I mean, Frank X. Walker, of course, I mean, he's very prolific. He has, if you can believe it, 10 collections of poetry that oh he's gosh. done. He's very <laughs> prolific in, in, in addition to all the other work he's done as poet laureate. But Shauna herself is a poet in her own right. She has two chat books, and she was also nominated. Um, her uh, for the Small Acts Literary Prize on a couple occasions, and her poetry has also appeared in the anthology. So this should really be a wonderful, um, again, sort of enlightening um, poetry reading. Uh, I know Frank and Sean personally, and they're both very dynamic, wonderful people, so I think that would be a, a great night Will as there well. be a time to talk to them? Yes, we are planning to have mm -hmm. a Q&A afterward. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. good, good. So hopefully people will be able to stay for that. Now, one of my favorite parts of African American History Month is the dinner. Of course, that's one of everyone's favorite. I know <laughs> it's yeah. great. I, I didn't go last year, but I went the year before. I okay. think, and it's fantastic. Yes, um, I think the entertainment this year is Bernard uh, Sweetney. Again? Yes, uh -huh. he's he's been the entertainment for seven for many years, um, and you know he's always a phenomenal, and it, it really you know adds a special part to African American History Month. Um, so. Now I know he's. Uh, local, but also has played nationally, hasn't mm -hmm. he? Yes, he's um, played with entertainers such as Shirley Horn, Donna mm -hmm. Hathaway, and Roberta Flack. Gosh, mm -hmm. well, we're lucky to have him. Oh, uh, yes, we are. Yes, yeah. we are. Is he from around here? Um, I think he is. Yeah, I think he. Uh, he. I know for. I know he lives locally. I'm he not does. sure if he originates from the mm -hmm. Eastern Shore, but mm -hmm. yes. So mm -hmm. great. Mm -hmm. Also returning this month, and I'm gonna have to look down at my notes on here. Nathan Williams <laughs> and the Zydeco Cha Chas. <laughs> yeah, now I have <laughs> never seen them, so you're gonna have to fill me in on what the heck they do. Well, I'm gonna have to be honest with you, Susan. This will be my first year seeing okay. them as well. But I can um, basically um, tell you that I'm sure it's gonna be phenomenal because um, June Krell Salgado, who you know, is the um, director of the you know the cultural diversity events on campus. Said yeah. this is their third invitation on campus. Mm -hmm. So they are much beloved um, entertainers. They're phenomenal. Um, just to give you a snapshot of how well known and respected that they are, they have been the recipients of the Zydeco Music Awards, um, the Zydeco. Um, Lifetime Achievement Award. Does that mean they're from Louisiana? The um, Zydeco. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know. If, I don't know if your viewers are familiar with um, um, Zydeco, but basically, it's a music genre that a lot of people associate with Louisiana. Mm -hmm. That's a combination of Cajun music, mm -hmm. blues rhythm and blues music and Jamaican music all wrapped in together. I love Zydeco music. <laughs> okay. I, I have gone to the uh, jazz festival okay, down in Louisiana yeah. many, many times mm -hmm. and, and always hit all the Zydeco performers because I, I really do like the beat. I, it's just fantastic. Yeah, it's very distinct. But I had a, it has a cha-cha work in there. The, um, I think, again, <laughs> I think it's just the idea that, you know, that idea of, of Louisiana, Louisiana was just a place where there were so many cultures coming together. So the eclectic the, nature. Yeah, the eclectic nature. Yeah. Um, of that of that genre of music, but again, I, I'm sure it's going to huh. be great. Apparently, you know, yes, um, Zydeco is fabulous, but apparently, um, Nathan uh, 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 Williams and the Zydeco Chachas are apparently great, you know, entertainers. When is Not that going to be? Do that. Um, that's going to be Thursday, February 11th. February 11th at. Um, do you remember? Uh, Holloway Hall. Oh, at Holloway Hall. At 7 p.m. At 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. I, I got to go check that out. Oh, yeah. That no, sounds definitely. really <laughs> fascinating. <laughs> now, also, another performing arts activity this year is called Step Africa. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means either. Okay, Step Africa, it, I mean, it's a tradition of stepping that a lot of people associate with African American sororities and fraternities. And um, it's just a, you know, it's, it's, it's another uh, dance form, a tradition. But what's interesting about is that can be traced all the way back to Africa. It's sort of what we might call Africanism, a cultural survival that peoples of African descent brought with them to America. And so um, that's basically what this group is, you know, well known for. And where will that be? Uh, that's going to be Tuesday, February 16th, also in the Hallway Hall Auditorium, 7 p.m. And in fact, just to note, Step Africa is the first professional company in the world dedicated to the tradition of stepping. Huh. And, and, and over the past 20 years, they've become one of the top 10 African-American dance companies in the U.S. Gosh. 
I can't believe the talent that's coming to this that's, campus. I, I, if you it's miss real, out on this month, then you're missing gonna, out. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah it's you really, really are. Be, it's a, it's an amazing program. Wow. I'm so excited about it. Really. Wow. Now the final African American History Month activity in February mm -hmm. is a lecture by a professor from I think University of Delaware. Mm -hmm. or Erica Armstrong Dunbar. Correct. What mm -hmm. can you tell us about her presentation? Um, her presentation is going to be on her second book um, to be published this spring um, called Never Caught the President's Runaway Slave Woman and basically it traces the life of Ona Judge, one of the President Washington's slaves who escaped from the President's house in Philadelphia to live a free life in New Hampshire and the reason why I'm sort of a interesting um, story is because he never actually pursued her even though he knew where she was. So this will really allow... just what I was going to ask you. Yeah. say, now, are you telling me the president could not find this woman? No, he knew. And, of course, there was a fugitive slave law. But I think that allows mm -hmm. us to sort of look at the complexity of, mm -hmm. you know, our nation's new leaders' relationship to, um, you know, to institutions like slavery, to think about the slave experience, um, you know, African-American history in the White House. I mean, you know, we have the, you know, the first African-American president, but then we have this other story about this woman, you know, slaves who worked in the White House. So, right. again, I think, um, I think this professor really put all of that into context for us and help us think I about that. I would like that. to see that and hear mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. It's very interesting to think of a president just saying, you know what, if this is what she wants, I'm not going to. Yes. Well, you know, it's sort of a it's sort of a mystery, and I think Dr. Dunbar will, you know, maybe be a bit of a detective and help us understand what all this, you know, mm -hmm. really means for us um, mm -hmm. in the 21st century. And when will that be? So that's going to be Wednesday, Feb February 24th at 7 p.m. in the Purdue Hall Bennett Family Auditorium. Okay, all this will be uh, yeah. online for anyone, yes. um, but I, I think just. The man, yeah. many things that we've talked about, it, it's pretty overwhelming yeah, how much is going <laughs> on during this month. Mm -hmm. um, so back to the Multicultural mm -hmm. Student Summit. What's that? Yeah, basically the summit is just a great opportunity for multicultural students and leaders to network, you know, sort of learn new leadership strategies and skills, you know, mm -hmm. how to address, you know, issues on their campus, and just to come together and have that sort of support and, you know, idea sharing that I think is useful for for you know today's college students. Does somebody on campus lead it, or is it? It's the um, it's um, SU's um, Office of Multicultural Student Services. Okay, that runs the event. He runs the event, and they usually have a keynote and then other and, and workshops and mm -hmm. those types of activities. Now, admission to that I believe is twenty five dollars if you're not an SU student. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, as a student, it's free. Yes. And except for the dinner, of course, um, everything else that we've talked about are they all free? Yes. If you can believe it, admission to everything is free. So SU's program is a very accessible, affordable way to learn about African American history, uh, um, history, African American history and culture. I mean, um, this is one of the you know amazing benefits of you know a university that offers this type of program that are you know free to the public. It's a great way for the campus and the you know and um, just the whole community to come together. Um, you know, the Del Marva area, the campus, you know, and to be a part of this celebration. We are so lucky to have this campus in, yeah. in our community, and I hope our community will take advantage of all of these wonderful programs that you all have planned for the month. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, a lot of planning went into it, mm -hmm. and I'm sure, April, you have some people that you probably want to thank. Yes, um, thank you. I would like to thank SU President Dr. Janet Dudley Esbach for her continued support of diversity and inclusiveness at SU. She's been a real champion of diversity at SU. She has. SU's Office of Multicultural Student Services, in particular its director, Vaughn White. Other members of the African American History Month Planning Committee, Drs. Dean Kotlowski, um, Aston Gonzalez, um, Ray Thompson, all of history, and also Dr. Manavrati of English. June Krell Salgado, Director of the um, Cultural Affairs Office. SU's Fulton Public Humanities Initiative. This is a new initiative at SU through the Fulton School, which is doing a lot of um, incredible work related to public humanities. Um, SU's Office of Student Affairs, in particular, Mintha Hines Wilson, who is Associate Vice President of Student Affairs. Um, the Departments of History and English, and also SU's Writers on the Shore reading series. We're, we're thrilled at SU um, to be able to do this this year, and I really, and I think the theme um, really um, 
made a lot possible of the, mm -hmm. you know, hallowed grounds, you know, sites of African immigrant memory. I just think that's right. beautiful. Right. Well, it's obviously you've put together quite a slate of events, and I mm -hmm. hope the people, like I said, will attend these events and, and get something from them. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, April, for all that you've done in coordinating all this, and I can't wait to hear your keynote speech. Thank you. <laughs> and now here's a look at all the events going on on the campus in February.
I would like to thank my guest, Dr. April Logan, Assistant Professor of English and Chair of SU's African American History Month Committee. I hope many of you will enjoy this year's African American History Month events. I'm Susan Purnell, and this has been Salisbury University on the Air. Thank you for watching.